How does that relate to the experience of using cannabis? Well, um, look at the amount of cannabinoid receptors in the brain, a lot of them. A lot of the effects of cannabis use are in the brain. Euphoria, um, uh, ang as an anxiolytic, it, it dissolves your anxiety or it can even cause your anxiety. So cannabis abusers or cannabis users talk about having this high, the euphoria, um, that's probably from some of the deep structures in the brain. Scientists are now experimenting to see which parts of the pot plant, including its cannabinoids and other biological compounds, might be the most effective against a variety of diseases, including diabetes and cancer. Despite all the difficulties, there's a group of doctors in the U.S. and abroad who have been advancing the research on the medical use of cannabis with highly impressive and sometimes revolutionary discoveries. In a scholarly cancer review article published in 2009, there were over 421 chemical compounds identified in the cannabis plant. And within this group of natural substances, there are many chemicals that have significant anti-tumor properties at low enough doses to where they would be effective cancer treatments. That's, that's an important part of this. Is it's one thing to be able to kill a cancer cell, but could you really survive, survive such a treatment? A botanist from the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs uh, branch, uh, Robert Melamede, who has written an article sort of comparing the carcinogenic effect of cannabis with tobacco and explaining why he thinks that cannabis uh, has the anti-cancer effect for lung cancer. There's nothing else that impacts on so many of our illnesses. You see, when I talk about these age-related illnesses, we're all aging, but we don't all come down with cardiovascular disease. We don't all come down with autoimmune disease. We don't all come down with cognitive dysfunction. We don't all come down with cancer. But the chances are we're going to come down with one of them. All right? And here we have this one drug that's able to help us holistically with our biochemistry to restore balance. You know, cannabinoids kill cancer cells in many cases. People are not aware of that. They think cancer, cannabis, anti-nausea. It's way beyond that. There are also studies taking a look at other organ systems that have found that marijuana uh, seeks out the cancerous cells and preferentially kills them over the healthy cells. There's a wealth of laboratory evidence that these anti-tumor properties kill cancer cells in a variety of ways. There are multiple mechanisms of action identified by which cannabis kills cancer cells and they're divided into various categories and among these are anti-proliferative effects normally that's that's one of the hallmarks of a cancer cell is that it just keeps reproducing so if you stop the reproduction that's an anti-proliferative effect there are anti-angiogenesis effects and this means that the cannabinoids will stop the tumor from being able to elaborate or grow new blood vessels to support the growth of the tumor. There are anti-metastatic effects and that is simple enough to mean that the cannabinoids block the ability of the cancer cells to spread into other tissues. And there's another effect that has a wild name, apoptotic effect. Apoptosis refers to the ability of cannabinoids to speed the death of the abnormal cells. And that's something that is, is especially important in cancer because you're, you're able to hasten the death of the cell without disturbing the normal cells around it. Seth Research Laboratories in California have recently demonstrated that in some tumors, cancer cells are killed by marijuana, while the other healthy cells are left untouched. Cells that stop moving and become still white dots are dead cancer cells. The ability of cannabinoids to kill bad cells while protecting healthy ones is particularly important when we're talking about brain cancer because of the so-called blood-brain barrier. The brain has to be sheltered from outside influences that might hitch a ride on the bloodstream and cause havoc. 
What is exciting and unique about cannabinoids is that they can pass through the blood-brain barrier because of their slippery, fat-loving nature. Cannabinoids get right into the brain's cancer cells by moving easily through the cell's membranes, which are also composed of lipids. The evidence is piling up in mice-infested labs that the endocannabinoid system, when stimulated by cannabinoids, has an anti-tumor effect and can instruct cancer cells to commit suicide. This was done by Manuel Guzman's group uh, within the past less than 10 years, and what they showed there was that originally that THC, when injected into a brain tumor in mice and rats, uh, a significant number of those animals, would the tumor would regress and disappear so that you actually had survival of rats that, uh, that would otherwise die. And they examined all the surrounding nerve tissue and that was all fine because remember once again cannabinoids protect nerves. Dr. Manuel Guzman is a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology in Madrid, Spain and is known for his groundbreaking studies on medical cannabis. We have observed that cannabinoids have an effect inductor of the death muerte de las células tumorales, un efecto inhibidor de lo que es el crecimiento, la multiplicación de las células tumorales, lo que hacen es disminuir el crecimiento de los tumores. If cannabis might be the miracle cancer cure that everybody's been searching for, then why don't doctors everywhere know about it? People have a hard time believing that cannabis can have all of these fantastic effects that are described, but what we're doing is we're just stimulating a natural system that's already there. This has been developing for hundreds of millions of years. The early, the invertebrates, the sea squirts, the hydra, there are primitive endocannabinoid systems in those organisms back, dating back six, seven hundred million years ago. The cannabis plant came along maybe 50 or 60 million years ago. Why aren't billions in funds being directed toward cannabinoid research by the organizations that raise money for cancer therapies? We're talking about medical research that, you know, it's really a double-edged sword. On, on the one hand, I'm thrilled that there's really more research taking place now uh, really, than at any time in history when it comes to the therapeutic use of cannabis and specifically the cannabinoids, the components in cannabis. You know, unfortunately, a lot of that research is still relegated to uh, taking place overseas. We see a little bit now finally taking place in this country, but really the United States remains fairly well behind the curve when it comes to cutting-edge medical cannabis research. It's very difficult to do research with cannabis, the plant product, uh, because, you know, it's restricted in what research we can do with it. Research uh, on this area is in its infancy, and that is because the United States government has discouraged that kind of research both in the United States and elsewhere. It's only an aromatic herb, yet almost every government in the world restricts or bans its use. In many countries, cannabis suppliers and even users can still be put in jail for life or even executed. It's illegal in every country. I mean, there's, I think there are treaties that prevent anybody from accepting marijuana as a medicine. Now, recently, Canada, Spain, and the Netherlands have sort of broken from, from these treaties, but I think these things are, are bigger than just any single country's politics. Despite these initiatives, we want to make clear that federal law still applies, and federal officials will continue to apply the law, and DEA officials will review cases, as they have, to determine whether to revoke the registration of any physician who recommends or prescribes so-called Schedule I controlled substances. Why does the corporate media continue to connect marijuana only with gangs, violent drug dealers, and society's losers, and not the growing numbers of doctors and scientists who are discovering its benefits? It is true that for those who use it regularly, pot can change your way of thinking, and it can make people question why they should continue to do things that aren't making them happy. I like smoking marijuana, it calms me down. I just feel totally at ease. Everybody knows me. You know, smoke a little marijuana, Tom, you'll be great. <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine, you know. Corporate world made me stressed, extremely stressed.